Hey, this is Andy Jenkins with the Oily App Podcast. And this week, we're actually going to do something different. What we've done for the last probably, it's got to be at least since quarantine, COVID, all that kind of stuff happened. I don't even want to talk about COVID, so don't email me and don't say, well, you should have thought this or you should have said this. Like, it is a non-question for this podcast. I'm just giving you the time frame of since something happened. Nothing more, nothing less. Don't even want to talk about the mask that you're wearing or not wearing or the one I don't have on right now. Okay, that's it. We did not record necessarily a live podcast in maybe since that time. Since then, we've been bringing you audio from some of the video classes we do. Every single month in Oily App Plus, we release a video class. Uh, actually, we do too. Usually, it's one that maybe I do. Um, they're okay. I, I usually do a decent job. Yeah, sure. Uh, the... The, the, the gals sometimes do one, like Gladys and Jocelyn have done yeah. some phenomenal classes that are in there that on DIY stuff, on planners, on, and, and then Jim Bob has done almost, he's about halfway through the entire body. Yeah. He's been doing the body workshop. So we've been bringing you some of the audio from some of those courses and sharing that. This one is completely new. We're recording this live now. So one take. I'm going to prove it. I've got two guys here with me. You heard one of them. Um, the loudest human being in the Northern Hemisphere. Ernie? <laughs> you get... Well, hey, I'm, and I have passed it on to my son. So when I'm, when I'm gone, there will be someone to take the baton and run with it. Well, it's like the sins of the father carry <laughs> on. Right. And the blessings <laughs> the carry blessing. on. So I don't know if the yeah. volume is yeah. like, it, it's a double edge. It could be yeah. one or the yeah. other. It's not It's not so good when you have like an eight month old that you're trying to keep to sleep. So I've, I've gotten in trouble more than once. I, I think I'm whispering and she's like, no, it's just a dull scream. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a silent. Yeah. Um, and then also, so Ernie is, uh, Ernie and my are Royal Crown Diamonds with Young Living Essential Oils. Ernie's the guy that started Oily App and all of that. And then I've, I've also got, we'll come back to his story in a little bit. I've also got Johnny Williams. Now, Johnny, do, go, go ahead so they can hear your voice. Hey, guys, how you doing? Okay. I'm excited to be here. Well, they can't hear you. Like, it's, uh, or they can't respond to you. So, <laughs> when on a podcast, we say, hey, how are you doing? <laughs> There's, it's just shouting into an echo chamber. <laughs> Johnny told me, like, he's never recorded one of these before. No, I've, I've, I've done lives before, but I've never recorded a podcast. They don't talk back. Yeah, I'm talking to you. They just delete you. <laughs> <laughs> they, they just they just press. All right, so Johnny's actually so. I think I'm in reasonably physically fit shape. I've run a 50k. I've biked hundreds of miles, climbed a mountain. Um, Ernie is probably in reasonable physical fitness shape. He does CrossFit yeah, five times a week. You know, I do Ragnars and run stuff. How much run. weight can you push? Uh, well, I can, I can deadlift. My PR deadlift is 490. Back squat is 460. 490 pounds? Yeah. Deadlift. Yeah, and then I can back squat. Like, like a quarter of a ton? That's right. And then I, <laughs> That's... Can, I can front squat 400. 390, whatever. Yeah, so... That's impressive. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting there. I don't know if you add all my numbers together if it would be 400. <laughs> I think it'd be but the same. It's, it's because, <laughs> don't add mine it, together. It's because, it's because when I was in high school, my brother and I overtrained our legs because all we did was basketball. So we just did leg, 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 leg. So that's why legs and deadlift. So that's what we did. So. Oh man, okay. Because you know, hey, I always said we couldn't jump because we, you know, so we. Because you're white. <laughs> because we're white, so I gotta work hard so I can jump. Wait, can, can we I, say? Can we say that? that? I'm referring to the movie. That's White right. men can't, can't jump. I'm referring no, to the I, movie. I saw that movie growing That's, up. Right? Yeah, so. And, and, and so we had. And he could jump. We had we had the stereotypes in our mind. So the first time that I actually got the that got the rim was was exciting. And then I got the right kid on the. You're like, oh, I'm not supposed to be able to do that. I, I could on occasion dunk a basketball. Oh. It wasn't like really clean. It wasn't like Johnny. I watched Johnny do the video of him doing the windmill, and that was that was impressive. But mine was more like get it over the rim. Got it. Yes. So. Okay. It, it just went in. Uh, now, that, now, that said, we're going to talk about some about fitness stories. The, the whole episode, This I know I'm kind of treading water here. I'm just kind of setting it up for the next several weeks for you. Um, this whole series is going to be on fitness. And one of the reasons we got Johnny in here is because Johnny actually, um, well, like he actually looks like he's in shape. So... That's right. <laughs> he, he, he is appearance and reality all together. Well, I, wa I walked into an event one day, and a guy, I was talking at it, and a guy looked at me and he goes, oh, the camera does add 10 pounds. And I was like, what? 
And he goes, you look bigger on camera. I was mm-hmm. like, what do you mean? Like, I look fat? He goes, no, like, you just look stronger on camera. Because it adds 10 pounds. But here, he was basically saying, you look kind of frail. <laughs> so, but, <laughs> so, but, nice. like, but, like, Johnny actually looks like he's in shape. So, you got biceps and all this kind of stuff. And, Everybody you know, has biceps. Thighs. Yeah, but, not, like, not ones you can see. A lot of people that are listening are going, i got a bicep under there somewhere. So, I, mean, I know everybody's... Got, Let's talk a little bit about your story, and then I'm going to define fitness for everybody. But let's let's talk about your whole journey, because Johnny's making some fitness videos. Yeah, yeah. And he's we'll making some we'll fitness we're, we're graphics. We're bringing Johnny on to do some amazing stuff for us, which we're really excited to talk about. But yeah, so yeah, maybe Johnny just kind of tell your story about how yeah. you're, you're tracked to fitness and and football and all that stuff. Yeah, so I'm I play football at Duke University. I was very very fortunate to leave from a very small town and graduating. My graduating class was 52 people, mm-hmm. and out of those 52 people, I'm pretty sure maybe six to seven percent went to college. Mm-hmm. And here I am having the opportunity to go to Duke University and get a good education and play a sport I loved. And so I'm very fortunate to do that, and also set a lot of inspiration in that town, you know, because it was, you know, you're not going to be able to make it out of this. Go get you a regular job. Mm-hmm. Maybe go to down the street to Dollar General, and maybe you can make minimum wage. And uh, that was the dream for most kids around that area. And so it was just to stay in, to stay in the area. Like that's what they, yeah, that's what they knew. How, how did you figure out that you love football growing up? Like um, man, I was a basketball player before, ah, gotcha. you know, so uh, I was maybe five, probably the same height I am now, 5'10", 5'11", when I was in high school. And uh, I was a really good basketball player. Mm-hmm. But uh, when I got to football, there's just something different about it. Mm-hmm. And um, I felt really dominant mm-hmm. in, in football mm-hmm. as Whereas as basketball, you had, you know, the height challenges, sometimes yeah. speed challenges. And, uh, you know, I did really good at that, but I did much, much better at, at football. And so, yeah. you know what? I was like, well, I want to be an entrepreneur. And I had an entrepreneur in mind as a, as a young guy. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, this is a business choice for me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, thinking like that as a, as a young guy is really, you know. Football, not basketball, was a business choice. It was a, definitely yeah. a business choice because okay. it was going to give me a better education. Right. You yeah. know, I maybe went yeah. D2 in basketball or junior college, but football, I had a chance to go to. Yeah, still honorable, but yeah, yeah if you can go farther, why would you D1, not? Why not do it? Yeah. And, you know. And now, now, what was it? Now, you had, you had a chance to actually go to Alabama at first, right? Yeah, it was it was crazy, crazy story, man. Um, Coach Smart, Kirby, not, is it Kirby Smart? That's right. It's right. Um, yeah, Georgia now. Yeah. He's at Georgia. Um, he was one of my recruiting coaches, and Ron Middleton, who's with, I think he's still with the Jaguars now. Uh, one of my favorite coaches, one of my favorite people of all time uh, is Ron Middleton. Uh, he taught me a lot coming out of high school and taught me a lot, you know, while I was in college because he ended up moving from Alabama to go to Duke and he was the one that mm. basically recruited me to go to Duke University. And so the whole story, small story, um, most people won't believe it because it's my story and I'm coming from Leroy, Alabama. So who's going to believe Where me? is Leroy? So Leroy is... That didn't even sound like that would be a place. I feel like it's a, a, a place on somebody's shirt. It's so small. Like, it's <laughs> unbelievably small. It's probably yeah. as big as this room we're sitting in. We're in the tiny house, everybody. Yeah. Y'all been watching, like, on the video? Like, I recorded the last thing was in the kitchen up there. I was like, I'm not going to record in the kitchen again. I'm going to be in the tiny house. But, yeah, it, was, it Leroy's the size of the tiny house. Yeah, it's literally, if you're on a highway, you if you blink your eyes, you're going to pass. You know, you're going to miss it. Wow. And so... Yeah. <clears throat> It's in. It's close to Mobile. It's probably about, you know, an hour, hour and a half from Mobile, Alabama, mm-hmm. if you know where that's at. Um, but it's in a really, really country. That's not close. That's that's well, like from here to Huntsville. To me, well, here yeah, to Montgomery. You, 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 you that's... Have to get around Mobile. I mean, you drive that, that drive from Mobile to Birmingham. Yeah. I'm half dusting almost close because it's like a three hour stretch of nothing. Yeah. It, to me, I mean, we went to Mobile almost every weekend, so it's okay. close to You're us. used to it. Know, close, yes, yeah. You know, it was a city from the country. I'm originally from Texas, so when I came to Leroy, Alabama, I was coming from a better education background, of, and you know, they actually moved me up to grades academically, like um, curriculum-wise, because mm-hmm. they were so far behind, mm-hmm. and um, you know. That just spoke more to my, I guess, my knowledge and my educational background. And, right. You know, I've always been a straight-A student. student and, and a dry, you had to drive, obviously. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> my mom was always about, rest in peace to my mother, um, 
she was always about get your education, have a better attitude, be the best person you can be. You know, I didn't always listen. Right. <laughs> but those are those things she was preaching to us as sure. kids. And so, like, getting back to Leroy, Leroy was very, very, very small. Mm. Um, everybody knew everybody's middle name, mm. last name, first name. It was mm. that small and so connected. And so, you know, when I went to Duke, it was a big inspiration for mm. not only the my friends, mm. but the community. It was mm. something like, hey, if Johnny can make it out, Everyone can make it out of here. Mm. Johnny was a very, very troubled kid. He was always in trouble. He was always doing things he wasn't supposed to do. And I ended up making it out. Mm. I was a straight A student, but my attitude wasn't always the best. Mm. And so, you know, things that, some choices I made and some things I'm not very proud of, um, I can teach now to the youth mm. and, you know, inspire them. So um, that's my story as far as going from. Leroy to to Duke, but I was recruited by Alabama and uh, Julio beat me out. That's my story, and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Julio beat you out, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, only like you know, Pro Bowl. Yeah, he's the future, best future Hall of in Famer my, in my in my opinion. Uh, between Don, uh, DeAndre Hopkins and him, two of the you know, for me are the two best. Best, oh yeah, are no the doubt. best in in the league right now. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you go to Duke. You so you don't go to Alabama. You go to Duke. Right. Um, now you did. Get, you get to get back at Julio at one point because you played him in. We played him in. Um, I don't know what year it was. Maybe my junior year. You wouldn't let him catch pass. So yeah, I, I played. We played against him. I actually had a concussion that game. I hit um, a guy named Brandon Gibson who played at UMS Wright in Mobile. Um, hit him on a dig route, which a, a dig route is a 15 yard route, and they just cut across the field, and. Um, I hit him in a way where my head touched him first and it hit his knee mm. and I was out for him. I don't know how long I was out. I was probably out for about 10, 15 minutes. You caused minutes. a commercial break? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I mean, like, that's what they, no, that's what they, you got a guy, you got a guy laying on the field. They're like, we're going to cut to commercial. Uh, during that I game, made, against Bama. You against were one Bama, of those guys. But no one caught a, a pass on me before that. I mean, and that right. was in the first half and so I didn't play the second half and I actually woke up in the hospital. I actually wrote a comic about it because I did a comic book in college on our daily, weekly um, You wrote a comic about getting a concussion? Yeah, I wrote a comic about me getting a concussion, man. <laughs> so I did a, a weekly thing of, yeah. I got to make fun of my teammates, I got to make fun of my coaches, you know. It was kind which, of, which we'll touch on that later. <laughs> Johnny making a comic book, art, graphics, got some really cool stuff coming. He, he's a multi-talented guy, but, but um, we're, we're glad you survived a concussion. Yeah, yeah. The, the many concussions that football players get. And yeah. So, mm. You know. That was one that was documented, and um, I feel like I still got some screws in my brain, so we'll see. <laughs> All right, so uh, after after football, you know, uh, when you see a lot of times you see guys that are, you, you meet at church, you meet at work, you meet, in the, you know, in the neighborhood, whatever, they were college athletes. It seems those guys go one of two directions. Uh, physically speaking, they either are completely out of shape to where you look and you're like, that guy played? Right. What? You know, like, mm -hmm. you know, you meet guys that, like, I, I knew guys in my church when I was growing up that were, you know, older men in their 60s. Um, and, you know, and you find out, like, these guys were scholarship athletes playing baseball or something. Um, but but they just never looked like it afterwards. They just kind of like, okay, that was the season I'm done physically. And then you meet other guys that were college athletes that stay in shape. Right. That stay physically fit. So you, you stayed in shape. Um Talk, talk to us about that journey because you're obviously not running routes and, you know, catching passes and things like that now. But I think one thing that we want people to hear is that there there is an element of being in shape that is college play worthy, college play level. But then, like you're kind of doing everyday fitness now. Right. I'm exercising. I'm not training. So let's so, talk. Let's talk through that, because so there's a difference between exercise and there's a difference between training. You're training. You're trying to reach a certain goal. You're trying to um, compete not only against yourself but somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know, you're training to their their uh, their level or above their level. For me, I compete against myself, and so I'm exercising. Mm -hmm. I'm basically competing against myself every single day. 
Um, and I'm just trying to, you know, for me, uh, my transition from college was, you know, I was actually homeless after college. Mm -hmm. And so um, I wasn't straight into fitness or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I was homeless. I was sleeping on the streets mm -hmm. in my car, my Mustang. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that was a, a big, big transformation for me coming from, you know, the background that I, I had had before. And, you know, me having pride, I didn't call my parents. I didn't call anybody. Mm -hmm. And so I was just trying to make it on my own because that was just, I was trying to be a man. And I mm -hmm. thought that was being a man is having, you know, putting your guards up and be having pride and not reaching out to anybody. So mm -hmm. that was my first transition out of, out of college. Um, but then I actually I called my best friend after not going through, you know, for going through weeks and weeks of sleeping in my car and eating that Taco Bell. Uh, the Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up mm. moving to Texas with him. So you moved back and back back home. Moved back home to Texas. Uh, his, I don't want to say his name, but uh, I'll say his first name. His name's Alex. He's been my best friend since I was in third grade, and we talk all mm. the time. And man, he, you know, he sent me the exact amount to get me there. Mm. Uh, if I didn't want to come, I, that was he did his job, you know, mm. uh, to get me there. And so. You know, I went in and ended up going and staying with him, and he, he taught me a lot because he was the same age as I was. He had uh, a wife and, 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 and mm -hmm. a kid. Mm -hmm. He was taking care of um, mm -hmm. his wife's kid, uh, and he had, they actually have another kid now. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, he taught me a lot about responsibility, mm -hmm. and uh, he's the one that actually really put me back into focus. And, you know, Johnny, hey, you're a superb athlete. I had a clothing line at the time and he was like, Johnny, you can, you can do whatever you want to do. Just put your first, you know, you already got your first foot. I did that for you. Now make the next step. And so after, you know, several months of staying with him, you know, I got back on my feet. I started working out again. I got inspired. Mm. I started back training mm. to go to the NFL. Mm. And, um, I actually moved back to my mother, uh, my mother's my parents' home, and I uh, started training on my own. And mm -hmm. so through that whole transition, I learned a lot about myself. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot about how much people care about me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it kind of just got me off the ground. You know, I got knocked down right after college, man. Lost my, you know, lost my dream of not, you know, getting the initial chance at the NFL. And, you know, it was just a very, very, very tough time for me, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I look back on that, all the people that were connected to, you know, getting me back on my feet and getting me back to where, where I am now, you know, I could not have done any of those things without them. And so uh, people like Alex, my mother and my dad, you know, my brothers, um, my godmothers, my goddads, I had so many people rallying me on, you know, like most people say, it takes a village, you know. <laughs> It took almost yeah. a nation for me to get to go. <laughs> that, that's a, I love that point there that, as that story unfolds there because it kind of gets into the de definition of fitness we wanted to talk about. Because, so, you know, obviously now, you know, you've, you've moved beyond training to exercise because right. you're, not, you're not chasing the NFL. Right. You know, you're, you're married, with, you've got a family, you know, you're, you're doing the responsible thing, being a man, you know, leading your family, serving, providing. And, <clears throat> but it was other things around fitness when you stepped away from football, it was other things emotional, mental, spiritual, right. yeah. that, that fed into you having a revelation, as it were, and a refocus, which led to, you know, at that point in time, training for the NFL, but beyond that, like a lifestyle change right. of fitness and exercise. So, which gets into, you know, I think it's a great definition, Andy, you want to share about fitness? Yeah, the, the definition here is, uh, and this is just one I put together, and I'll tell you where I got it from, so you guys can drop in, I'll put a link in the show notes. Um, we've I've got a group where we've just been talking about work and life balance, and uh, I'll, I'll put a link there. And as we've gone through that, we've talked about fitness and we've talked about family and faith. And when we got to fitness on that week, we came up with this definition: it's a measure of your health in each area of your life, physical, so that's your body, mind and emotions, that's your soul and spirit. Okay, sit on it. Let me read it again. Fitness is a measure of your health in each area of your life. Physical, body, mind and emotions, soul, and spirit. So really kind of linked out to three areas there. Uh, I did, did not kind of stretch it out into relationships and all of that because really physically we're talking about just like your, your yourself um, and, and 
in other aspects, we do talk about some of the relational dynamics. But this one, I, I like it because it's it has a it has a couple of dynamics here. The first one is this: it's it's kind of all encompassing. It's total. It includes body, soul, spirit. So you you think about it from this perspective: how effective are you going to be in life if your body is in shape? So physically, fitness but your soul and your emotions and your mind is out of whack. Yeah. And and that might have been some of the stuff that Johnny you ran into. Yeah. You're I mean I you're was a in top shape. When yeah, I was you're in top shape. Yeah. yeah. You know, I I had just trained for the NFL, so I was in superb shape. Yeah. But my mental and my my spiritual awareness wasn't there. Yeah. You know, I was raised in the church. I was raised my mother and my father raised me to be, you know, a holy man. Yeah. yeah. And so I, you know, I prayed when I was in the, in yeah. the car, kind of yeah. prayed a lot hey, in the car. Hey, get me out of this. <laughs> Please get me out of this. I will never do any of the, you know, right. the prayers, you know, the, 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 the small prayers we do pray when we get in trouble. Yeah. And so, you know, for me that, you know, having those three aspects and, you know, branching out to the other things. Yeah. You know, yeah it's, that's it's, huge for me yeah. because like my, that first dawned on me. So my, my and I just celebrated our eight year old anniversary. We've been in living eight years. Nice. And so about seven years ago, we started the CrossFit journey. So almost mirrors our young living journey. Yeah. But having grown up and done a lot of traditional weightlifting and then training back for basketball, uh, I heard, you know, I didn't realize, yeah, I guess you, you don't have the internet, you don't realize there's controversy over everything. But I didn't realize there was controversy over the definition of fitness. Oh, there's right? even controversy oh, right. over yeah, controversy. Yeah, 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 <laughs> there's right. plenty. Right. Yeah, and so, and so when I was doing my one-on-one class, my, kind of my first aha moment was like, oh, this, is, this is bigger and broader than I've ever thought of this. But just like as I got into young living, my whole journey of health and wellness and awareness of my body and, and what I put on my body and what I put in my body was, growing, was rapidly growing and changing and expanding. Uh, they said, so my, in my one-on-one entry class at CrossFit, he said, <clears throat> said, you know, Fitness is not just you, know, you draw uh, this really cool uh, on the marker board this 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 graph with this this you know your line at the bottom that a linear, a linear line going up to the top and then it flattens back out again and he said you know uh, a lot of people are way down here on the bottom part of their fitness level and, and at the top where the where the line flattens back out that's world class athletes what we're going to focus on is eighty percent of this in the middle and get you to where you you're not world class in one thing but you're really good at a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. So he said the idea of fitness was the idea of fitness was CrossFit is that you're fit across multiple disciplines. Wow. So it's not awesome. it's not that you're you know because you see you will see guys who can run a you know a 15 minute 5K can't bench press 180 pounds. Right. You know guys who can who can you know deadlift you know a thousand pounds and can't run a half mile without just c- collapsing. So the idea is that the most fit person is the person um, that is fit across multiple disciplines, weights, cardio, several things. So. That was a great first intro to me of, okay, I need to expand my thoughts and process of what it means to be a fit person. And then this definition really kind of brought it all home for me uh, that fitness even, even even goes beyond that CrossFit definition of fitness to the entire person. Well, yeah, I mean, what you said, I, I can't even believe that would be controversial, but I can because I've been yeah. I've been on the internet. Yeah, because you, you, get, you get 10 people, 10 coaches... From different sports or different whatever in a room, you'll get 15 different definitions of what fitness is. Well, you think about, okay, so we, we just acknowledged, okay, it's it's total. So if your body's in shape but the other stuff's out of whack, you're not going to get as far as you could. I meet people all the time, and this is where I was uh, a couple years ago, where, you know, I, th- I think mentally I was probably on my game. Uh, mm-hmm. Not not as good as I am now, but I had great ideas, but but I was 50 pounds heavier. I, yeah. Like I would crash in the middle of the day every day around two o'clock, and I couldn't sleep at night. I'm waking up in the middle of the night, having to go to the restroom all night. You know, it, it, like it was just some weird. It's a longer story. If you're sick on the couch, it doesn't matter how right. mentally fit or how right. spiritually mm-hmm. fit you are. Um, that sounded a little harsh, but you're not going to be able to bring right. Right. the gift that you That's are right. to the world around you. So you like. That's right. All of these are necessary. Well, and, and part of that I, I found too, going through engineering, it's like when you, uh, my background in college degree of engineering is like, it seems like in modern education, they just focus on one thing. So like, you know, the purpose of education is to make money or whatever, not to make you all, yeah, yeah, you got to make a living and, and find what you're good at, but the, the, the wealth and the rich of the entire person. So we came through our engineering classes and got to the senior design class and they gave us like this, this, this one page paper we had to read 
from the 1920s. It's like, what does it mean to be an engineer? And the whole thing was talking about not just designing with passion, but like the arts and the sciences and, and music and culture. Like it was the whole man. And we've done, we've done the same thing with fitness. I think fitness has been hijacked to where in an age of we just want production, we want guys data, we want to be able to make money with this or whatever. Fitness is just some outward, external, you know, measurable thing right. that doesn't address the entire person. Because, you know, whether we people want to be, you know, anti-spiritual or, or you know, just the tangible material here and now, and they want to, you know, not look at material, or spiritual or, or internal or, or moral things, but all those things are connected inside of us. Right. You can't divorce one from the other if you're going to deal with a, a really, like, this really thorough definition of health and fitness. It right. has to go beyond just the outward, you know, barometers that you can measure. Because, you know, you've probably, you've seen stories of, you know, guys, probably athletes who, they were killing it, but their personal life was just falling apart. You know, it just, you know, I mean, it goes back to my, my uh, coaching career that, you know, I just formally, you know, got out of most of the, most of the kids I deal with, you know, they were in top shape physically, you know, he was coaching college athletes for some of you guys who are yeah, listening in. And, um, you know, I coach basketball and, you know, they spend most of their time with their coaches. And so mm-hmm. building them up as young men is the most important thing. You know, yeah. dribbling a basketball is not going to, uh, you know, feed your family if, if you're not going right. to be able to make it to that top, you know, that top tier. And we see for some of them, even if they were good enough, if the internal is not fixed, right? You they, they, they're so broken on the outside, they can't even get to that because they're always in trouble. Right. So, you, I mean, you see that in so many aspects of life and, and, and so many backgrounds and, you know, so many fields. So, yeah. um, for me, having the experience that I had, uh, and seeing, you know, one of my coaches literally mentor me from day one all the way in and was on me every single day about becoming a better person. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I'll i text him, you know, every week and, you know, and tell him, you know, man, thank you for not giving up on me. Mm-hmm. Not me as the football player that you saw that could potentially make it to the NFL. But you understood as a coach that... I needed to be mentally fit. I needed to be emotionally fit. I needed to be spiritually fit. And those three things literally have been those anchors for me as, as a man. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm very, very thankful for my coaches and not giving up on because I didn't, I didn't see it when I was in college. Mm-hmm. You know, they would tell me, you know, do this this way, do this this way. And, you know, as a young guy and not respecting authority and not knowing how to respect authority you kind of just blow it off. You kind of go through the motions. Hmm. And so, you know, I'm glad I did, you know, can, can hear those voices in my head when I'm making decisions now, you know, so very, very thankful for, for that. Well, so. Let me move to something else that this definition says. The first thing we said was, okay, it, it acknowledges kind of the total overall, um, every aspect of, of, of you. Cause again, the definition of fitness that we've come up with, it's a measure of your health in each area of life, physical, Mind and emotions and spirit. the The second aspect that I want to hit is that it it focuses on health, not on lifting a certain amount of weights, not running a certain speed, not hitting a specific number on the scale. In my mind, those are the things that we chase, but those are all really symptoms of fitness. They're effects of fitness. So if you're just chasing a certain speed, or if you're just chasing a certain weight, you're just chasing a certain number, you're just chasing, all this is generally surrounded around numbers. It, it might be that you're chasing the wrong thing. If, if you get the, the fitness, the overall uh, mm-hmm. physical, mind and emotions, spirit, you get that, that stuff right, mm-hmm. all of those symptoms, my guess, it, yeah. they tend to take care of themselves. Yeah. Like, I, I think that's what's so important there about highlighting that is the fact that like, what's going to sustain the drive? What's going to sustain the effort, the push? It's those foundations right. of, of total health, mental, spiritual, you know, all of those things together, emotional. Uh, because that's the foundation that's going to drive you to push through. Um, and there's been so many points where if people, you know, like even like, a, you know, we have some famous CrossFit workouts where they're, they're, they're um, named after, you know, war heroes or whatever, people who've, people who've died in the line of service or whatever. And there's, there's, there's points in there, like one of them is Murph. You know, and you, you have to run a mile with a 20 pound vest. You got to run a mile, do 300 air squats, 200 push ups, and 100 pull ups, and run another mile. It takes me it takes me 50 to 60 minutes to do it. 
uh, and it's a mental workout. But if I don't have my mind right and my emotions right, like I can, if I come in emotionally distraught, exhausted, and frustrated, I won't, I won't finish the workout. It's, it's all that, all that together feeds and sustains the drive. For me, I mean, it just when I'm when I'm going to work out, you know, my I don't have work, I don't really have workout partners, so it's it's really harder when you don't have somebody to push you and to guide you and to do certain things. And so I'm basically in there on my own and filming myself and doing things that, you know, uh, I see other people doing in the gym too. But having that motivation to go by yourself is really tough. So for me, I always listen to some kind of motivational um, clip uh, that will get me going. I'll watch videos of other guys that are in the gym working mm -hmm. out and you know I'll listen to something spiritual before I go work out I mean it to me I try to click my mind before I can go and engage my body that's right and so you know for me just trying to trying to engage that on a on a day-to-day -day basis is something that's very very important because most people yeah. are, are either the they're intrinsic motivate in, intrinsically motiv motivated yeah. or extrinsically mo motivated I don't know if those are words or not but um, you have two different motivations. You got the guy that wants to look good in the mirror. Yep. Then you got the guy that's motivated. Just I want to be healthy. I just want to, you know, do this for my family or whatever. Right. So, yeah, Makes that's sense. A, that's a great principle. Well, let me do this. I, I I've got like we're at, we're out of time. Uh, so I've, I've got to stop. <clears throat> Pause the story, and get the definition in your head again. That, that's kind of the whole point of this episode. Just introduce you to Johnny. Hey, we got some stuff coming up. And fitness being all-inclusive, okay? A measure of health, each area of your life. Body, so physical, mind, and emotions. That's your soul. Also, your spirit. Next week, I'm going to be back, and I'll, I'll have Johnny. I'll have Ernie again. And we're going to... Basically, we just left you at Alex's house in the story. So we got to get him from Alex's house back and kind of pick up that next portion of the story, give you some more tips, tricks about fitness, about walking and overall health. Again, I'm Andy Jenkins signing off. Uh, if you don't have Oily App on your phone yet, you need to grab it. Go to your app store right now. It is like, just search Oily App. It is like having a desk reference, which I don't honestly think anybody can even get anymore unless they're bootlegging them somewhere, That's right. right? That's right. But you can, you can get That's the app right. and it is, uh, it's right there. Yeah. It's, it's like having the uh, mythical once available desk reference <laughs> at your fingertips on your smartphone. Plus all kinds of more great stuff, including you know, clap classes, gym bomb, podcasts, app, tons of access. So it does things yeah. a book won't do. That's right. Like it does things like That's desk right. reference wouldn't do any like monthly giveaways, uh, right. stock, stock notifications, stock book yeah. can't do that. Yeah. I mean, and I, I honestly, I tried to carry a desk reference one time in a backpack. I'm not knocking the desk reference. I've, I've got one sitting up there upstairs right now. Right. Uh, it's just an artifact now because you can't get them anymore. But I can carry my phone around, you know, and look That's up right. stuff. Anyway, all right. Helpful. I'm being, I'm going to get inappropriate in a second. Let me sign off. You guys have an amazing week. We'll be back next week with another. We'll have fitness episode number two on the Oily App Podcast. <laughs>